Welcome to the Idea Leaders Self Learning Series on the co creation of virtual learning accessibility. This video is about accessibility design principles and assistive tools for creating and using digital materials for teaching and learning. Introduction This module covers the following topics. First, there will be an overview of approaches to enhancing the accessibility of digital educational materials. Then, we will briefly introduce the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, WCAG. However, we will not go deep into all criteria in the WCAG. We will focus on introducing a non-exhaustive list of recommended practices and practical examples in the subsequent sections. The examples are related to the following three domains, namely, adjusting the presentation of content, preparing and using alternative formats for perceiving content through different senses, and navigating and interacting with the materials. With this module, we hope the brief introduction of relevant design principles and assistive tools would help to reimagine, restructure, and broaden the scope of accessibility support for wider group of students to better cater to their diverse needs and preferences, to promote effective expression and delivery of knowledge through digital educational materials and e-learning tools to help students and instructors make informed design and use of teaching and learning materials, and to advise students and staff members who may need accessibility support, especially for someone with temporary disabilities who might not be aware of their needs and possible or suitable accessibility support, adaptive strategies and assistive technologies to facilitate teaching and learning. Part of the content of this video is adapted from the following three documents from the World Wide Web Consortium. W3C, Web Accessibility Initiative, WAI. The first document is Accessibility Principles. The second document is Diverse Abilities and Barriers in How People with Disabilities Use the Web. The third document is Tools and Techniques in How People with Disabilities Use the Web. You may find the full references on screen now. You may also refer to the text version of the reference list below the video player on the web page. An Overview of Approaches to Enhancing the Accessibility of Digital Educational Materials We should always keep accessibility in mind as we create teaching and learning materials and carry out teaching and learning activities. We should always proactively consider accessibility from the beginning and throughout the entire process of designing and delivering educational materials and activities, rather than being an afterthought, regardless of whether any students approach you with request for accessibility arrangements. Do not address accessibility issues only when students request accessibility arrangements. It has been very common to handle accessibility issues by retrofitting existing teaching and learning materials or environment in response to receiving certain accessibility requests from self-identified disabled students after the course has already started. Discussion among the students concerned, instructors, and accessibility support team may be conducted while the course is ongoing during the semester. The retrofitting processes and other accessibility arrangements would probably be determined mainly based on the requests, as well as their disability types based on some documentary proofs such as medical proof. This approach is basically reactive in nature. However, we may change the workflow. Another approach could be relatively more proactive in creating accessible materials and environment at the outset. A process-oriented approach would consider the diverse needs of wider groups of students under different situations starting from the beginning as much as possible to establish a more accessible virtual environment for more students as many as possible at the outset, rather than mainly retrofitting the materials in response to receiving accessibility requests from some students. It aims at minimizing the chance of students encountering barriers, thus the need for students to make accessibility requests. And it aims to facilitate a more enabling experience of accessing and navigating digital environment and materials under the presence of different access needs. An example of perspective of such a process-oriented approach is the temporal sequence of creating digital educational materials and course delivery. The stages broadly include designing the content, involving the adjustment of the presentation of content, exporting and dissemination, involving the preparation and use of alternative formats for perceiving content through different senses, using and interacting with the materials, involving the navigation and interaction with the materials, 
Such a process-oriented approach aims to facilitate a more user-oriented and stage-wise planning to make accessibility become an inherent part of the creation and delivery processes. So what are the standards or guidelines of designing digital educational materials with accessibility in mind? A very important guideline is the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, WCAG. The Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, WCAG. WCAG is an international standard developed by the World Wide Web Consortium, W3C, Web Accessibility Initiative, WAI. The latest version is WCAG 2.2, which was published on October 5, 2023. The WCAG 2.2 provides several layers of guidance. At the top are four principles that provide the foundation for web accessibility, known by the acronym POR, Perceivable, Operable, Understandable, and Robust. P is for Perceivable, Perceivable Information and User Interface. Information and user interface components must be presentable to users in ways they can perceive. This means that the content cannot be invisible to all of their senses. Examples of perceivable design air, providing text alternatives for non-text content, and providing captions and transcripts for multimedia. O is for operable. Operable user interface and navigation. This means that users must be able to operate the interface. The user interface components and navigation cannot require interaction that a user cannot perform. Examples of operable content include content that would not cause seizures and physical reactions. Users can use keyboard control or voice control. U is for understandable. Understandable information and user interface. This means that the content or operation cannot be beyond users' understanding. Examples of understandable content include Text is readable and understandable. Users are helped to avoid and correct mistakes. R is for robust. Robust content and reliable interpretation. For example, content is compatible with different browsers, assistive technologies, and other user agents. Under the poor principles are 13 guidelines. The 13 guidelines provide the basic goals that authors should work toward in order to make content more accessible to users with different disabilities. The guidelines are not testable, but provide the framework and overall objectives to help authors understand the success criteria and better implement the techniques. The four guidelines under perceivable content are about text alternatives, time-based media, adaptable, and distinguishable. The five guidelines under operable content are about keyboard accessible, enough time, seizures and physical reactions, navigable, and input modalities. The three guidelines under understandable content are about readable, predictable, and input assistance. And the guideline under robust content is about being compatible. For each guideline, there are testable success criteria. The success criteria are what determine conformance to WCAG. That is, in order to meet WCAG, the content needs to meet the success criteria. There are three levels of conformance. Level A is the minimum level. Level AA includes all Level A and AA requirements. Many organizations strive to meet Level AA. Level AAA includes all Level A, AA, and AAA requirements. For each of the guidelines and success criteria, in the WCAG 2.2 document itself, the working group has also documented a wide variety of techniques. The techniques are informative and fall into two categories, those that are sufficient for meeting the success criteria and those that are advisory. The advisory techniques go beyond what is required by the individual success criteria and allow authors to better address the guidelines. All of these layers of guidance, including the principles, guidelines, success criteria, and sufficient and advisory techniques, work together to provide guidance on how to make content more accessible. It is also important to note that even content that conforms at the highest level, AAA, will not be accessible to individuals with all types, degrees, or combinations of disability. You are highly encouraged to refer to the reference materials developed by the World Wide Web Consortium, W3C, to learn more about WCAG in greater detail. On the screen now, you will find seven examples of such reference materials about the WCAG developed by the World Wide Web Consortium. 
You may also refer to the text version of the reference list below the video player on the web page. About adjusting the presentation of content. We can adjust the presentation of the digital materials to make it easier to perceive, distinguish, and understand. It helps facilitate an effective expression and delivery of knowledge through digital educational materials and e-learning tools in order to cater to students' diverse learning needs and preferences. Regarding the use of colors, we should ensure sufficient color contrast and use multiple visual cues to present information. Do not use color as the only visual cue. Content with sufficient contrast between foreground and background color combinations is easier for everyone to read. Content without sufficient color contrast would be inaccessible to some users, particularly people who are colorblind, people with visual impairment, people viewing the slides through monitors in bright sunlight or glare, and people viewing the slides through a projector display in a well-lit venue. Ensure sufficient color contrast between text and its associated background. Do not use color on color background and text, such as light blue text on dark blue background. For text overlay, it is suggested to avoid text overlay on a busy background. Images or videos usually consist of a wide range of colors. It could be difficult to ensure sufficient contrast between the colors in the background and the text. It is difficult to read the text overlay. The following are three examples of increasing the accessibility of the text overlay. Method 1. Insert the text over the plain section. Ensure sufficient color contrast between that section and the text. Method 2. Insert a solid background behind the text. Ensure sufficient color contrast between the solid background and the text. And method 3. Insert a darker overlay to the background to increase the color contrast between the background and the text. We may make use of software applications to check color contrast. There is a number of color contrast checkers that are free of charge. Color contrast is checked against the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, WCAG. Using these checkers, an example is the Color Contrast Analyzer from TPGI, available for both Windows and Mac. Enter the colors of the background and foreground text. These checkers allow multiple methods of entering colors, such as the Color Picker tool, RGB color codes, or hex color codes. The Color Picker is particularly useful to users who are unfamiliar with color codes. Then, the checkers will tell whether this color combination would fulfill or fail the color contrast requirements based on the WCAG guidelines. If it fails, then it might suggest that we need to consider changing the color of either the background or the foreground colors, or both. Otherwise, this color combination might not be visually accessible to some readers. After we change the colors, redo the check until you get a combination that fulfills the accessibility requirement. Other examples of similar checkers are the WebAIM Contrast Checker, the Adobe Color Contrast Analyzer. You may input the text color and background color values or upload a screenshot of your project to pick the colors you want to check for contrast. The Adobe Color Contrast Analyzer will also recommend colors that would give better contrast. In the Accessibility Tools tab of the Adobe Color Contrast Analyzer, Apart from general color contrast checker, you can choose the color blind safe checker to check whether the color theme or palette would be accessible for people with color blindness. The accessible color palette builder can help you build color palettes with combinations of background and foreground text colors that conform with accessibility standards. Color Oracle is a free color blindness simulator for Windows, Mac, and Linux. It would show in real time what people with common color vision impairments would see. Check whether the colored text and its associated background colors are properly displayed in grayscale. It is useful and important practice because some students may print out course materials as handouts in grayscale. For example, we may use Mac built-in color filter to check grayscale display. Go to Apple menu, System Preferences, Accessibility, Display. Select Color Filters. Select Enable Color Filters. Select Grayscale from the drop-down menu. Then the Grayscale filter will be applied to the entire screen. For Windows built-in color filters, go to Start, Settings, Ease of Access, Color Filters. 
Switch on the toggle for color filters. Try selecting the other color filters from the drop down menu to view the spreadsheets in simulated color blindness situations. Fix any parts in the spreadsheets that do not present the intended meanings under color filters. Besides color contrast, we should consider the accessible use of color as visual cue. We should avoid using color as the only visual cue. People with color blindness, low contrast sensitivity, or some visual impairment may have difficulty distinguishing between certain colors. Users who print out slides in grayscale, people viewing slides through monitors in bright sunlight or glare, and people viewing slides through a projector display in a well-lit venue may also be unable to differentiate the slide's colors. Therefore, using color as the only visual cue to convey important information could hinder the user's understanding of the content. To enhance accessibility, it is important to use distinguishable and multiple visual cues to present information. For example, in the course schedule, red text is used to represent compulsory lecture and green text is used to represent optional lecture. However, some users such as people with color blindness may be unable to differentiate the red text and the green text. Users who print out the slides in grayscale may also be unable to differentiate the colors. To improve accessibility, we may use multiple visual cues such as color, symbols, and text to indicate compulsory lecture and optional lecture in the table, respectively. For charts, graphs, or maps, examples of accessibility-enhancing features include color, clear borders, pattern fill, line style, such as solid or dotted lines, data labels, text description, and legends. For example, use color, pattern, and text labels to identify each section. Put the text labels near or directly on the corresponding section to enable readers to understand the content clearly. Do not put all the text labels below the charts, graphs, or maps. We may change the visual appearance of the text to achieve greater readability. Examples of issues to be considered are as follow. Font, font size, character spacing, line spacing, and paragraph spacing, punctuation and symbols, emojis and emoticons, hashtag, and text colors. Regarding the choice of font, sans serif fonts are generally preferred to serif fonts. Sans serif font do not have decorative lines at the edge. Examples of sans serif font are Arial, Calibri, Helvetica, Noto Sans, and Verdana. Serif fonts have small lines at the edge that may hamper readability. Some users might find it hard to read decorative fonts and those whose letters are close to one another. Examples of serif font are Times New Roman, Baskerville, and Courier. Avoid using only decorative fonts or light fonts. Some users, especially people with visual impairment and people with dyslexia, might find it hard to read decorative fonts and those whose letters are close to one another. Sentence case is generally preferred. Avoid using uppercase or lowercase letters for the whole piece of continuous text. Text fully in uppercase or lowercase may show no differences in the shapes of texts. All the texts may visually appear like a single rectangle. It would particularly create barriers to some people with visual impairment and some people with reading disabilities. Here are examples of commonly confused sets of letters that may hamper readability. When we choose a font, we may pay attention to whether the characters of that font can be clearly distinguished. Otherwise, it would be potentially confusing to readers, particularly to people with reading disabilities, people with dyslexia, and people with visual impairment. The first set is about the numerical one, the capitalized letter I, and the lowercase letter L. For example, both Arial and Noto Sans show a clear distinction between the numerical one and the two other letters. However, the capitalized I and the lowercase letter L look very similar in Arial. It can be confusing. Noto Sans gives a clearer distinction between the capitalized I and the lowercase letter L, which may facilitate readability. The second example is about the distinction between small letters R and N and the small letter M in relation to the character spacing between R and N. When R and N are adjacent to each other in a word, an R is on the left, and N is on the right, and if the spacing between the small letter R and N is too small, the letters are N would look like a small letter M. This can be confusing. The third set is due to mirroring between P versus Q, 
and B versus D. Some people may experience difficulty distinguishing between P versus Q and between B versus D. The mirror images look very similar. This can be confusing. The next example is about confusion through flipping and swapping the characters. Take a reel shown on screen as an example. The flipped images of the small letter U and the numerical 9 look very similar to the small letter N and the numerical 6, respectively. This can be confusing. We may preview how the characters look like in different fonts and styles such as bold, italics, and thin to get a better idea. An example is the Google Fonts database where you can search a particular font and input the words that you would like to preview. Go to the Google Fonts website. Then, search a font or select a font from the list. Then, click the filters command to display the filter options. Enter your preferred settings and input the words that you would like to preview. Then you can see the information of that font in greater detail and preview the specified words in different styles of that font. Besides the fonts database, you may go to their knowledge section to learn more about readability and accessibility of typography. There is a Microsoft font library where you may preview some characters of a font in different style and weight examples and other information of that font in greater detail. When we go through the detailed information of a font, we may notice that some fonts are open type font and some are true type font. It is suggested that we use open type font to ensure greater accessibility. Open type font would work in a wider range of programs and operating systems. So how do we know which fonts on our computer are open type? For Mac users, you may refer to the built-in font book. You can preview a font view its available characters and symbols, and see font details. To open the built-in fontbook app in Mac, go to Finder, Applications. Double-click on the fontbook icon, browse the fonts on the list, and select the font you want to preview. Then, click the Info button in the toolbar above the font list to see details about the font, such as language support, the manufacturer, and the location of the font file on your Mac. Go to the Details section, look for the term, Open Type under Format, in that section. Moreover, you may also click the Sample button in the toolbar to display fonts as blocks with a sample sentence. Double-click the sentence, then enter your text to see it in that font. For Windows users, you may refer to the font folder. You can preview a font, view its available characters and symbols, and see font details. To open the font folder, go to the Control Panel, switch to the Icon View. Then, click the fonts icon to open the font folder. Windows displays all the installed fonts in this font folder. Select and double-click the font you want to preview. The font viewer opens and shows the font's appearance at different font sizes. Look for the term open type at the top part of the font viewer. Use appropriate font size. Appropriate font size can make the text more comfortable and easier to read. The font size should not be too small, especially if the materials will be presented by a projector. Larger fonts would be more accessible to people with visual impairment. It also helps students sitting at the fore end of classrooms or lecture halls. Note that the character spacing, line spacing, and paragraph spacing should not be too small or too large. If the spacing is too small, it may be difficult to distinguish between the characters, lines, and paragraphs. If the spacing is too large, it may look like separate content, which would hamper understanding. Be aware that some punctuations may or may not be read out as intended by text-to-speech software. For example, 8 n 9 pm may simply be read as 8 9 pm instead of 8 to 9 pm as intended. It is suggested to use text to present important information, if possible, such as 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Consider spelling out the intended meaning or function of the symbol in text to avoid confusion. For example, write 25% to 50% instead of 25% and 50%. Some symbols may or may not be read out as intended by text-to-speech software. Do not use the superscripts or subscript shortcuts along with alphabets to mimic and insert mathematical expressions such as small letter x with a superscript 2. Although x square and small letter with a superscript 2 may look similar visually, 
The small letter with a superscript 2 created in this way may not be recognized as a true part of mathematical equation as intended by text-to-speech software. Be aware of the differences between the marks of inches, feet, apostrophe, and quotation marks. Use the marks of smart quotes as the quotation marks. Do not use the marks of straight quotes as the quotation marks. Emojis and emoticons can help convey different emotions and create a more welcoming and friendly tone of the content. Use emojis or emoticons to supplement words rather than replace them. Avoid using emojis at the middle of sentence. Do not use emojis and emoticons alone to convey important information. Add text description to facilitate understanding, if needed. Do not overuse emojis or emoticons. Having too many emojis within the content would make it difficult to understand the content. For example, the default alternative text for the emoji on Apple iOS system is grinning squinting face. If a series of emoji is used continuously, text-to-speech software might read aloud as grinning squinting face, grinning squinting face, grinning squinting face, grinning squinting face, grinning squinting face. It can be annoying and confusing to the users. It may disrupt the flow of reading and understanding. Emoticons are generally created by combination of symbols, alphabets, and characters. Although the use of emoticons becomes more and more common, not everyone understand their meanings. The meanings of each emoticon may not be universal. We should also consider any potential cultural differences in the usage and meanings of those symbols, alphabets, and characters. Sighted users may be able to read and interpret the visual presentation of the emoticons as a whole directly. However, text-to-speech software may hear the components of an emoticon separately. It would be confusing to the users and affect their understanding of the content. For example, screen readers might read aloud the emoticon, smiley, as semicolon parenthesis, and read aloud xd, as two separate letters xd, instead of the intended meaning of smiley. Hashtags can be created for users to follow specific topics on websites and social media platforms. Adopt camel case in creating hashtags by capitalizing the first letter of each word and or adding underscore in the multiple word hashtags. An example is hash adopt camel case in one single word versus hash adopt underscore camel underscore case. It could give the cue that there are different words in the hashtag. It would enhance the readability of the hashtags for everyone. It would provide cue to people with dyslexia or cognitive disability to identify the word pattern and recognize the words in the hashtag. Text-to-speech software might be able to read aloud the hashtag as different words as intended. Without spaces between words in the same hashtag, there would be no cues for some readers. And text-to-speech software to distinguish the separate words in the hashtags. Content with sufficient contrast between foreground text and background color combinations is easier for everyone to read. Ensure sufficient color contrast between text and its associated background. Do not use color on color background and text, such as light blue text on dark blue background. We may make use of software applications to check color contrast between text and its associated background against the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, WCAG. There is a number of color contrast checkers that are free of charge. Examples are the Color Contrast Analyzer from TPGI, the WebAIM Contrast Checker, the WebAIM Link Contrast Checker, the Adobe Color Contrast Analyzer, and Adobe Colorblind Safe Checker. Use descriptive link text to enhance the accessibility of hyperlinks. It is important the link text is concise and give relevant information of the action and the destination of the hyperlinks. Use concise link text. If the link text is too long, it may visually appear to break across separate lines. Some users may misunderstand. There are several hyperlinks. A long link text may also hinder understanding. Add remarks in a bracket to indicate the action of the hyperlinks, such as, it will open in new browser tab. If the hyperlink downloads a file, indicate the file type and file size in link text, such as, PDF, 24 MB. Give relevant information of the destination of the hyperlinks. Use the full email address as the link text. It clearly shows the hyperlink opens email instead of web pages or documents.
Other link texts such as contact the project team or email us do not indicate that this hyperlink is an email address. This can be confusing. Avoid using vague link text such as read more, more information here or click here to present the hyperlink. These link texts are non-descriptive link text. It is confusing as it does not provide meaningful information of where or what the hyperlinks will take the users to and when used out of context. Users of assistive technologies, such as screen readers users, sometimes scan a list of hyperlinks in the document for effective navigation and understanding. Screen readers would read aloud link text to notify users that this is a hyperlink, such as link text, link, or link, link text, out of link. Using the full URL as link text would make screen readers read aloud every single character of the URL, which can be confusing to the users. For example, the URL shown on screen now will be read aloud as follow http colon www.example.org slash services slash local.html. This would be very confusing. Therefore, depending on the context, in general, do not embed the links using the full URL as the link text. Embed the short URL to keep the link text concise whenever it is possible. For reference list items, the work's URL or DOI may be retained for user's information. The title of the work can be the link text under these situations instead of the work's URL or DOI. The difference between a reference list and the body content is that the reference list is not meant to be read from start to finish. The information in the reference list is only needed if users want more information about some specific references cited in the body content. Not every user would follow every link in a reference list. Sometimes, the materials may be printed out as hard copy. It is helpful to preserve the actual link address. Besides the semantic meaning, in general, the visual styling of the link text should be different from the surrounding body text to help users recognize that there are hyperlinks. Note that it would be inaccessible to use color alone to indicate link text. It would create barriers to some users, such as people with color blindness and people with low vision. To enhance readability of the link text, the link text is in general underlined and in blue. At the same time, ensure sufficient color contrast between the link text and its surrounding body text, between the link text and the background, as well as between its surrounding body text and the background. The WeBame Link Contrast Checker can help check the color contrast between the link and body text, between the link and the background, and between body text and the background. Note that for some authoring tools, the styling of the link text such as the color may change after the hyperlink has been selected, clicked, or visited by the current user. For example, in Microsoft Word, the default style for these followed hyperlinks or visited hyperlinks is in general purple with underlining. We may modify its styling to ensure sufficient contrast against the original hyperlinks, the surrounding body text, and the background color. You're encouraged to refer to the module in this self-learning series on enhancing the accessibility of Word documents to learn about modifying the text styling in greater detail. Moreover, it is important to check that users can activate the hyperlinks using different commands such as the mouse, keyboard, or speech recognition systems, or other methods. About audio visuals. Consider the sharpness or clarity of graphical contents. The resolution should be sufficient for clear reading, even when it is zoomed in. But pay attention to the effect on the overall file size. If the file size is too large, it may require higher bandwidth of internet connection for downloading. Not everyone could afford more advanced devices or programs and stable internet access. Also consider the potential compatibility of different aspect ratio of multimedia and the screen size of different devices. Common examples of relevant multimedia are PowerPoint slideshows and videos. Avoid too much background noise. Avoid extreme differences in sound effects. Keep the volume level at consistent level whenever it is possible. Unexpected sound or extreme differences in sound effects within the same video or audio may be shocking or distracting to some audience. If there will be sudden loud noise or any potentially triggering sound in the media, provide users with a warning message and or mention this information in the media timestamps to alert the audience. 
For example, audience may want to turn down the volume of their earphones before playing the media file. Creative use of animation or flashing content in video may promote user engagement. However, overuse of animation, flashing content, autoplay, auto loop, or background audio that cannot be turned off may cause distraction from the main content, especially people who have difficulties in reading or concentrating. Moreover, animations, flashing objects, moving, blinking, or flickering content may cause discomfort. Content that flashes more than three times per second may trigger unpleasant feelings, dizziness, nausea, or seizures in some people, such as people who are photosensitive. Provide an option, such as an on-click command, to allow users to play, pause, or stop the autoplay of the flashing content whenever it is possible. This minimizes discomfort and allows users to read the content at their own pace or as they wish. You may refer to the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, WCAG, from the World Wide Web Consortium, W3C, for detailed guidelines on flash thresholds and the technical formula for calculating general flash and red flash thresholds. You may also make use of the Photosensitive Epilepsy Analysis Tool, PEAT, developed by the Trace Center at the University of Maryland for measuring whether web or computer applications are likely to cause seizures. You are encouraged to refer to the module in this self-learning series on enhancing the accessibility of video and audio in greater detail. There can be alternative presentation styles of the same set of information to cater to the diverse learning styles of learners. We will cover four examples in this module, including tabular versus graphical representations, text versus non-text presentations, table versus paragraph presentations, and image of text versus real text. Regarding tabular versus graphical representations, for example, the same set of statistical data can be presented as either a table or a graph, or both, in an accessible way. You're encouraged to refer to the other module on the suggested practices of enhancing the accessibility of tables, charts, and graphs created by Excel spreadsheets in greater detail. Regarding text versus non-text presentations, non-text presentations may help some people with communication disabilities to express. At the same time, it is important to provide text alternatives, alt text, for graphical content. Examples of graphical content include photos, shapes, pictures, charts, and graphics. Alt text concisely describes the content and the purposes of the graphical content in brief phrases or one to two sentences. Here is an icon with an example of alt text on the right that reads, the access for hearing loss symbol, a graphic of an ear with a thick diagonal line crossing through it between the top right corner and the bottom left corner, a capital letter T at the bottom right corner of the ear graphic. Some assistive technologies such as screen readers and braille reader cannot interpret graphical content. Without alt text, Screen readers may only read aloud, image or graphic, or the file name. Users of assistive technologies cannot understand the graphical content. The following is an example, showing how the built-in screen reader in Mac, that is voiceover, would read aloud the icon, in the absence of an alt text. Tip 5 Image Lay out a re-image Alt text enables users of assistive technologies to understand graphical content. When screen readers recognize an image with alternative text, screen readers will read image or graphic to notify users, along with the associated alt text. The following is an example, showing how the built-in screen reader in Mac, that is voiceover, would read aloud the icon in the presence of an alt text. Layout area. The access for hearing loss symbol, a graphic of an ear with a thick diagonal line crossing through it between the top right corner and the bottom left corner, a capital letter T at the bottom right corner of the ear graphic image. Sighted users generally do not see the alt text. However, when images do not load successfully, and all the browsers block images by default, alt text of that image may display to let users know what the image is about. Sighted users would also see the alt text under this situation, even if they are not using assistive technologies. You are encouraged to refer to the other modules in this self-learning series on the suggested practices of inputting alt text in different kinds of digital materials in greater detail. On the screen now, you will find four reference materials about how to describe complex images, such as those related to art, chemistry, 
mathematics, flowcharts, geographical maps, and tables. You may also refer to the text version of the reference list below the video player on the webpage. For infographics versus transcripts, we may disseminate the graphics and transcripts together. Display the full text of the transcript directly above, below, or next to the infographics, whenever it is possible. Or we may provide a link to a file or webpage for the transcript. If the infographics and transcripts are disseminated through webpages, social media posts, or email, a note such as transcript follows the flyer, transcript in the comment section, or refer to the attachment for the transcript, can be added at the beginning to notify users. Regarding table versus paragraph presentations, an example is creating the class schedule in the course outline. In Microsoft Word, headings and subheadings in the paragraph format can be formatted to be listed as part of the heading hierarchy, shown in the navigation pane to facilitate navigation by users including screen readers. However, headings and subheadings within table cells cannot be formatted in the same way. Use tables for Nessus for data presentation only. Do not use table just for the purpose of formatting or layout. Tables that are created for layout formatting may not contain meaningful header or cell information. Assistive technologies such as screen readers cannot locate any meaningful header information or make sense of the information in each cell. Even if screen readers read out each cell, it does not provide coherent information to the users. Moreover, even if you make the grid lines invisible, it does not really mean the grids disappear. Regarding image of text versus real text. Image of text is really like a graphical content. Take scanned PDF documents as an example. In general, these scanned images of text does not contain real text, which means the text cannot be selected, highlighted by cursor, nor edited. It is not accessible to assistive technologies, such as screen readers. Moreover, the text in an image of text would get pixelated when the images are magnified, zoomed in, or zoomed out. It would particularly make the text inaccessible to users of magnifying tools. On the other hand, for searchable PDF documents with real text, it means the text can be selected, highlighted by cursor, or edited. Real text is more accessible to assistive technologies such as screen readers. Moreover, real text would not get pixelated when the document is magnified, zoomed in, or zoomed out. It would make the text more accessible to users of magnifying tools. We may try to convert an image of text content into editable text by optical character recognition, OCR, software. It could be a common situation of preparing reading materials. The screenshot shown on screen was applying OCR using the Enhance Scans function in Adobe Acrobat Pro. Overall speaking, avoid scanned image of text. Use documents with real text. For PDF, avoid scanned PDF documents. Use searchable PDF whenever it is possible. It is suggested to consider the content structure and arrangement for a more accessible presentation of content. In this section, we will cover the following issues, navigational aids, reading order, page structure, and buttons and interaction elements. A well-formatted and meaningful heading structure allows users to better understand the semantic structure of the document. Users could jump between headings to look for information from large piece of text efficiently. It may facilitate information processing. Properly formatted heading hierarchy would help generate different navigational aids in different authoring tools, such as a table of contents and bookmarks, to facilitate more efficient navigation and better understanding of the documents. Instructors and students can quickly have a better idea of the content structure of a long essay to reflect and think about how to improve the logical flow of the paper. Users of assistive technologies, such as screen readers and keyboard control, may navigate the document efficiently by jumping between headings. Without heading structure, they may need to go through the whole document every time they want to look for certain parts of the text. It is suggested to keep headings concise, specific to the content that belongs to that section, and clear to someone new to the topic. A concise heading would also be useful to Braille display users. Refreshable Braille display may present a line of 40 to 80 Braille characters at a time. If you are using Microsoft Word, you may make use of the Styles pane 
to set the formats and heading structure. For papers requiring specific academic styles and formatting, the formats can be set and applied to different documents. The table of contents, format style, and structure can be updated automatically, and it can save time updating manually and minimize errors, especially when revising dissertation and long papers. In Microsoft Word, you may also make use of navigation pane to check heading structure and navigate the document easily. Headings that have been correctly applied heading styles would appear in the navigation pane. It can help you check whether the heading structure is properly formatted. It can also help you browse the document efficiently by selecting the heading from the navigation pane. However, note that headings in tables, text boxes, headers, or footers would not appear in the navigation pane. To view the list of headings, go to the View tab, select Navigation pane, then select the headings. You may jump between the sections for easy navigation by selecting the corresponding headings. You are encouraged to refer to the modules in this self-learning series on Word documents and PDF documents for the suggested practices of formatting heading structure in greater detail. Regarding the content arrangement, it is important to ensure a logical reading order of the content as intended. Reading order is the sequence in which assistive technologies such as screen readers will read the contents. Sometimes the reading order can be very different from the position and order in which the contents visually appear as intended. Take the items on two PowerPoint slides as an example. The visual locations of all the items are the same and the visual order is the same. However, the order in which the items are added to each slide is different. The reading order of the PowerPoint slide could be partly determined by the order in which the items were added to the slide, which can be very different from the position and order that visually appears as intended. As a result, the reading order may not be logical to the users of assistive technologies. For example, a screen reader may first read aloud the first paragraph, then the third, followed by the second, and the fourth paragraph, and finally the conclusion. Therefore, it is suggested that we check and fix the reading order to make sure it is logical and matches the intended meanings, as conveyed by the visual order. You are encouraged to refer to the modules in this self-learning series on PowerPoint and PDF documents for the suggested practices of setting a logical reading order of the content in greater detail. Other examples of techniques of enhancing the accessibility of the overall content structure and arrangement are as follow. Provide a summary for large pieces of content at the beginning. Supplement the body text by summaries, images, graphs, and other illustrations to facilitate understanding. Provide a glossary for complex words or phrases. Hide less relevant parts of the content to minimize distraction. For example, freezing certain rows and or columns in Excel spreadsheets. Regarding buttons and interaction elements, we may consistently label forms, buttons, sections, and other parts of the content. Increase the predictability of link targets, functionality, and overall interaction. We may prepare and use alternative formats to enable perceiving content through different senses. People perceive content through different senses, depending on their needs and preferences, such as seeing, hearing, and or touching. It is important to make the teaching and learning materials accessible for people using different modes of perceptions, and users can readily and flexibly convert the materials into their preferred formats. Regarding format conversion, some people may convert the content from one form to another to perceive it, such as converting from text to speech or from text to braille. Some people may perceive the content through multiple senses. For example, some people with dyslexia may want to hear and see the text to facilitate understanding. From hearing to seeing, examples are captions, transcripts, as well as sign language interpretation. In general, transcripts contain the correct sequence of verbatim of any speech and descriptions of important auditory or visual information. From seeing to hearing, such as audio descriptions, Audio description is a term used to describe the descriptive narration of key visual elements in a video or multimedia product. This process allows individuals who are blind to access content that is not otherwise accessible simply by listening to the audio. In audio description, narrators typically describe actions, gestures, scene changes, and other visual information. 
They also describe titles, speaker names, and other text that may appear on the screen. For text-to-speech technologies, it is in general an automatic conversion of accessible text displayed on the screen into a synthesized voice. Examples of text-to-speech technologies are the Microsoft Immersive Reader and the Read Out Loud function in Adobe Acrobat PDF. There are handheld devices with a smart camera that can read aloud text from printed surface or digital screen to perform text-to-speech conversion. The photo on screen shows an example of such device called Occam My Eye Pro. It is a voice-activated device that attaches to virtually any glasses. It can instantly read aloud text from a book, smartphone screen, or any other surface and recognize faces. Occam My Eye conveys visual information audibly in real time and offline. From seeing to hearing and touching, screen reader software is an assistive technology that can perform text-to-speech conversion. Screen readers convert accessible text displayed on the screen into synthesized speech and braille. Examples of accessible text include the real text we discussed in the previous section on image of text versus real text and those non-text elements with properly formatted text alternatives as well as documents with accessible content. Screen reader software are currently available for use with devices running different operating systems such as Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. Screen readers work on computers and mobile devices. Examples of screen readers include the following. JAWS, job access with speech. JAWS works on devices running Windows. It requires paid license. NVDA, non-visual desktop access, available for free of charge by anyone around the world. From the official website of NV Access, http colon slash slash nvaccess.org. Currently, NVDA works on devices running Windows and VoiceOver, a built-in screen reader, in devices running macOS and iOS. To activate VoiceOver, go to Settings, Accessibility, then VoiceOver. Turn the settings on or off accordingly. From seeing to touching, refreshable Braille display is a mechanical terminal that displays a line of 40 to 80 Braille characters by raising and lowering the dots dynamically, like a stream of moving pins. An example is Focus 40 Blue Braille display. Navigating and interacting with the teaching and learning materials. People navigate and find content using different strategies and approaches, depending on their preferences, skills, and availability of appropriate devices or systems. People use different approaches to enter text and activate commands. Some people may use software and customized settings to enhance the efficiency of input typing, writing, clicking, and activating commands. How people navigate and interact with materials is highly relevant to the design of interactive materials and the design or selection of e-learning tools for teaching and learning activities such as surveys, real-time in-class activities, during live streaming sessions, and learning management systems. The design of the content is an essential factor to support different styles of navigation by allowing flexible and multiple or alternative modes of response input and participation. It would help facilitate a smooth flow of interactive teaching and learning activities. We will go through the following examples including keyboard, pointing devices, mouse and cursor, hands-free interaction, screen magnifiers, text-to-speech technologies, refreshable braille display, reading assistant software, and other examples of tools and techniques. Some may want to operate the device us and or navigate through the content using keyboard only without the need to control the mouse pointer or cursor. Some people may customize keyboard shortcuts to activate commands. Some may customize keystroke typing options, change the mapping of keys, assign personalized shortcut keys to frequently used functions, set filters, and set sticky keys to support single-handed typing. Some may type single keystrokes in sequence rather than typing simultaneous keystrokes to activate commands, such as commands for special characters, shortcut keys, and menu items. There are some ergonomic keyboard designs to cater to the needs of different users. Some keyboard designs may contain larger keys, key labels, key spacing, illuminated keys, or custom layouts. For example, a key guard that is a plastic or metal cover mounted on top of a keyboard could facilitate people whose hands shake to avoid accidental adjacent key presses or duplicate keystrokes, such as for some people with cerebral palsy and people with visual impairment.
Other examples of typing aids are slip-on typing or keyboard aid, hand-strap typing aid. Some people may use the on-screen keyboard, a virtual keyboard displayed on a screen, so that it can be operated with a touchscreen, mouse, trackball, joystick, or other pointing devices. For pointing devices, examples of customization include the following, mouse with adapted design, trackballs, joysticks, and selection switches. Some people may customize their mouse and cursor settings to cater to their needs, such as recognizing and compensating for involuntary movements like tremors and spasms. Customized built-in settings of the mouse, cursor, and trackpad may include the size, speed, and sensitivity, as well as alternative control options, such as changing the mapping of buttons, changing the sensitivity of the mouse to movement, setting filters, and setting larger clickable areas for buttons and links. The size and appearance of the mouse pointer can be changed. Double-click speed can be changed by adjusting the mouse or trackpad's reaction time when the person double-clicks an item. Scroll speed, or the speed at which a person scrolls through documents and windows, using the mouse, along with the dragging style of the trackpad, can be customized. We may customize display settings, such as the styling and effects of the cursor or pointer on screen. Examples include the following, size and shape, color and highlighter, magnifying the content, speed, sensitivity, trail display, and on-click effects, etc. Changing the size of the screen, text, or mouse pointer can make it easier for participants to follow along as you share your screen. Make use of a larger cursor to highlight and or point to the main points of the content or the parts being elaborated. Take the built-in display settings in MacBook as an example. Go to System Settings, then go to Accessibility, then Display. In the Pointer section, customize the settings of the pointer based on your needs, such as changing the pointer size, the pointer outline color, and the pointer fill color. Examples of hands-free interactions are switches operated by foot, shoulder, sip and puff, or other movements, head mouse stick keyboard, mouse stick, and other aids to help with typing. Voice recognition software, which recognizes the human voice and can be used to dictate text or to issue commands to operate the device. Eye tracking, sometimes called eye gaze, a system that monitors eye movement to control the mouse pointer and detects blinking to initiate mouse clicks. Head movement, for example, moving the pointer using the movement of your face or head as detected by the camera that's built into or connected to your device. Some people may want to change the settings of the web browser, operating system, or screen to enlarge or reduce text size and images. Some people may use magnification lenses, binoculars, or other visual aids and software such as screen magnifiers to better see the content. The picture on screen is a program called Zoom Text to create a high contrast display with white letters on black. Users can see the size of the cursor while typing. There are screen magnifiers, some of which are built directly into the operating system of the device. These software tools enlarge the text and images. Take the built-in display settings in MacBook as an example. Go to System Settings, then go to Displays, then select the extent of screen magnification you need, such as the default or the larger text mode. Some may navigate digital materials using text-to-speech technologies, which have been previously introduced in this module. Examples of common text-to-speech technologies are immersive readers, screen reader software, and handheld devices with a smart camera that reads text from printed surface or digital screen. Some people may use refreshable braille display. Some people may use different types of reading assistant software to change the presentation of digital content and provide other functionality to make it more readable depending on their needs. Some functions of those reading assistant software are customizing the font type, size, spacing, or foreground and background colors, reading the content aloud and highlight the text as it is being read out loud, scanning the text for complex words and phrases and linking them to glossaries, hiding less relevant parts of the content, such as sidebars and header areas, providing outlines of the page headings and summaries of the text passages, other examples of tools are spelling and grammar checkers and word prediction tools, which support writing, 
In general, word prediction tools would prompt the users with a list of selections of matching words, phrases, or sentences based on the current input and sometimes the context after the first or second key press. These tools aim to help spelling and grammar accuracy and increase typing speed. Some word prediction software automatically collects new words as they are used and considers a person's common vocabulary when predicting words in the future. Concluding remarks. This module is intended to serve as a general introduction to examples of design principles and assistive tools that might enhance accessibility and facilitate the access and navigation of digital environment and materials. For details of where to obtain the tools, how to operate them, or other details, please refer to the corresponding websites or other official sources of information. We hope that this module provides more ideas about accessibility support for a wider group of both students and staff members to better cater to their diverse needs. Disclaimer. This video does not contain any business promotion elements. Software, programs, and operating systems are constantly and rapidly developing along with changing accessibility functions. Statements in this video about the functions of any software, programs, and operating systems may no longer represent the current status. The recommended processes in this video are not exhaustive or the best solutions for each situation. It is possible that the hyperlinks of the cited resources in this video might be edited or removed by the corresponding contributor after publication of this video. References You may find the full references on screen now. You may also refer to the text version of the reference list below the video player on the webpage. Acknowledgement This project is funded by the UGC Special Grant for Strategic Development of Virtual Teaching and Learning. The first author, Gloria Ma, would like to acknowledge the support of the postdoctoral fellowship scheme offered by the Research Grants Council of Hong Kong. To cite this video, please follow the suggested citation. This work is licensed under Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike 4.0 International. For more guidelines on creating accessible digital educational materials and virtual learning environments, please refer to our Virtual Learning Accessibility Toolkit at https colon slash slash vl accessibility toolkit dot hku dot hk or download the full text in pdf from hku data repository you may scan the qr code on screen now to visit the database you may also download the set of cheat sheets for quick reference and sharing you are highly encouraged to watch the other videos in this id leaders self-learning series to enrich the knowledge of the basic concepts practical tips and resources of enhancing the accessibility of virtual teaching and learning. Here comes to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Let's begin our journey towards co-creating accessible virtual teaching and learning.